you know, in terms of messaging, Fiona, you know, and you think about kind of like a framework that you've used. So let's just assume you've done a lot of research. You've had, um, you know, a ton of data that you know, has come in, whether that's from the research you've done or third party research or maybe other stakeholders within the organization that's passed that uh, information to you. Let's say, for example, the product manager. Do you have any best practices for developing that initial messaging that you would use for the, let's call it the official launch? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, you know, with the goal of really understanding our audience and speaking their language uh, through our messaging, um, once we have all of the, once we've done the research, like you said, um, the work then begins to really try and clearly articulate the unique value that we're, this new feature or product is bringing to our customers. Um, so I usually start by identifying the problems that it solves um, and really working to describe how it's solving those problems. Um, and I like to support that with, with proof points. Um, for example, if your benefit is we have great customer service, um, you know, go a level deeper by saying like we've won 20 service excellence awards. Um, I try to like leverage the data that we've pulled in that initial research phase to put hard numbers into our messaging um, where we can um, to just keep it really simple and clear and concise. Um, something else that we started doing, um, and it, it's great if you can, if you have the resources to, but leverage copywriters um, for some really like, bigger, important launches. Um, not only do they have the talent to take your messaging to the next level, but it can be super helpful to have an outsider kind of translate, make sure you don't have that like that that language, that that internal language that you can get so comfortable using, um, making that doesn't quite hit with outside audiences. Um, I always like to have an outsider come in for mm. that reason as well. Um, and then um, always like to, of course, make sure that our messaging is aligning with our brand, um, keeping it um, concise and and uh, consistent across platforms. Um, and then iterating and testing as much as possible where we can um, to make sure that it's resonating, um, to make sure that, you know, they're, you're not going into launch with it, with any sort of like positioning problem, making sure that it's very clear um, the value that you're bringing to customers. Are there any specific stakeholders that have to get sign off or give, or give sign off rather to be able to say, okay, this is what we're completely focused on and how do you sort of defend that at times? Cause I think sometimes there's these opinions internally, right. That organ organizations might c come up with because of whatever they've been, you know, speaking to internally versus this very thought out, you know, data backed messaging that you have come up with as the product marketing manager. Right. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, we're lucky we have a communications um, lead on the team who is a really strong writer. Um, so I always like to run um, any messaging by him, get his feedback, um, get his sign off. It's not a, it's not a formal um, like approval process, um, but he's kind of he kind of owns our brand voice. So I like to make sure that um, he he does approve and and um, gives it his stamp of approval essentially. Um, and then, of course, we make sure we have um, kind of like our if there if, if there's a leadership sponsoring the launch or just more involved in the launch, um, we'll make sure to get their um, sign off on it as well. Chris, uh, you know, I, it's interesting because you have a platform that allows you to test a lot of this stuff, right? What what's sort of your uh, your process for for the development of this messaging positioning? Yeah, kind of riffing on what Fiona was saying, like the, the test and iterate part of it's so important in your messaging because you're, let's just be fair, you're probably not going to get it right the first time. <laughs> uh, and like, that's a, a, a fair assumption to make with any messaging. And what I like to look for is like, you'll get an aha moment with, with your messaging and it will feel right. And then you'll let that run for a little bit. And then you're probably going to get another one. And it's just going to keep iterating and, and it's going to smooth out and you're going to feel comfortable at some point. But like we're we're a pretty small scrappy team at, at Center Code, at least on the on the marketing front, and we don't we don't have as many people to work on that messaging. So we we kind of steer in the direction of our our users a lot, 
I'd like to tell this like real brief story that I, something I've learned when I, I ran a test a while ago with a pretty big company and they were testing out a, a smart smoker. So they have a smart like pellet grill. So they something they would smoke, you know, brisket on or something. Uh, and they had it's smart. So one of the big features on it was that it was Wi-Fi enabled and you can access it from your smartphone. And right when you when you think of it rationally as a product marketer, it's we have access to it from anywhere. Right. It's like, oh, yeah, that's easy marketing messaging. Right. Um, it's easier to to maintain it and and watch it from a from a distance because you can access it from your phone. But we found some some feedback inside the the test when we were running it. And someone ran into like, oh, man, I love the Wi-Fi feature. It's so cool. And I was running this test. So I kind of poked a little bit more. I have a research mind. So I'm like, why? Why, why was it important to you? And we got to talking with this, this user and she was elaborating. Well, usually when I have to do this, like when I have to, to, to make this meal, I got to go back and check on it pretty frequently. So I have to leave my house. And I have to go outside and check and I have to come come back in. And she would do that pretty frequently. And she said, what it allowed me to do was to spend more time with my my family. So she's like, I, I got to be part of the party a little bit more. Right. So like I, I like to think of it in this these two states of like you have this rational, logical value that your 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 product is providing, like access, um, ease of use. And then you have like this emotional side of it and like how we weave that into our, mm. our stories inside of, uh, in, in marketing can really hit home. So if, if we're targeting a market that's families, that's cooking and they want to spend more time with their family, but they, they don't want to have a, a bad result at the end of it. It's like, that's something that we can kind of work in there. Mm. So like, I've always liked to, to break out my, my um like my value statements in that that vein of having that logical and rational and having that like emotional connection with with my market and letting that tell the tell the story a little bit better so that's one thing that i'd say is a is a good approach 